Hello everyone and welcome to Authenticate You. The topic for today is eating disorders in favor with NIDA Awareness Week, which is February 21 through February 27. So we're about just made it halfway through the week. And so I'm going to be talking about um, like the myths and facts, info, giving information about it and like the most common misconceptions about it and going through different types of eating disorders and the most common two or three out there and what n actually no I'm going to cover that in the other video so yeah let's begin okay so I know it's going to be a very long thing so I'm actually going to split these videos in two so this will be part one and then I will soon do part two so we're going to first start off with, haha, that's backwards, percentages and statistics. So like 50% of people you either know or someone with an ed or you either experienced it pers um, affected by it personally, um, you have come in contact with an ed eating disorder. When people don't understand um, or grasp the concept, of how it are having an intricate and dangerous and very challenging eating disorder where it's really complicated to recover from and it's not like you just snap your fingers and you're done or a one quick fix and so it's really dangerous because assumptions create these myths and the myths are like create the stigma and then the stigma prevents the person from getting seeking help since they feel bad about each other, they feel guilt or shame or anything else. So one in five women actually struggle with an eating disorder or disordered eating. And others, um, Ed affects up to 24 million Americans and 70 million American um, individuals worldwide. An estimated of 10 to 15 percent of people with anorexia are actually male um, and bulimia too. Ninety percent of those who, ninety percent of those who have eds with the women between ages twelve and twenty-five is when you normally have the, where you normally like, I don't know, spawns or, you, I don't know, like comes out or um, presents itself. I don't know. <laughs> It's estimated currently 11% of high schoolers have been have been diagnosed with eating disorders and that the numbers are rising. And 15% of young women residing in US who are not diagnosed with an ED are more likely to display a substantial amount of disordered eating behaviors and attitudes. So even though they may not have the full blown disorder, they'll still show like little tiny behaviors or whatnot. A study done by Cornell University found that 40% of male football players said they surveyed, and surveyed that they engaged in some sort of disordered eating to stay in weight, to stay in shape and cut the weight and everything else. So it's not only a female disorder, it's a male disorder as well. Probably not gonna even edit this video because yes. <laughs> The most common behavior that will lead to, um, yeah, actually, I'm going into myths, I think. Yes, you like how I'm organized? All right. But the most common behavior that will lead to an eating disorder is dieting. And the diet and diet-related industries is a 15, it's a 50 billion per year, per year, um, income that they receive so for each diet and diet fat or product that people buy or we buy into they're making 50 billion dollars a year so just think about that 35 percent of normal dieters progress to pathological dieting and 20 to 25 percent of them actually progress to partial or full-blown syndrome of the eating disorder According to a recent study, sadly, over half of females 18 to 25 would prefer to be run over by a truck than be fat. 
<laughs> and as uh, so the other two thirds survey, they would rather be a horrible person or unintelligent. Crazy. Now, these are probably going to be long because I really want to get the facts out since not many people know. So bear with me and just laugh when I mess up. So 81% of 10 year olds are afraid of being fat. 51% of 9 to 10 year olds feel better about themselves if they're on a diet or if they're dieting. Anorexia is the third most common chronic illness among children or adolescents. A young woman with anorexia is 12 times more likely to die earlier within the 10 years than a young woman the same age as her without an eating disorder. So you can tell it really takes a toll on your body. Um, five to ten percent, five to ten percent of anorexics die within ten years of onset, and eighteen and twenty percent die within twenty years of onset. Only fifty percent report ever being cured from an eating disorder. And those stats are really true because I have lost so many friends to an eating disorder, and they lost their battle, and it's just a devastating disease, and. It's crazy. <clears throat> so 20% of people suffering from anorexia will prematurely die due to complications consequently related to their eating disorder, including heart issues and suicide. Men also constitute 40% of those who struggle, struggle with eating disorders. So this was just a minuscule um, amount of facts out there since they're arising and constantly sadly we got to like sort of reverse the way it's going because these numbers are like on the rise and the ages are getting lower and it's just really sad and not <laughs> needed and so which is why I spent a considerably long amount on the facts but as we're done with that let's go to Mythbusters, I forgot these are so backwards, whatever. So, Mythbuster number one. You can tell someone has an ed eating disorder just by looking at them. Let me see what. <laughs> um, either you possess like um, eating disorder radar or you're a psychic or there's just a little bit of assumptions going on. So remember that assume makes an ass out of me and you. And individuals with eating disorders come in all different shapes and sizes. Like we have like this ideal thing of like, oh, anorexists look like this, and oh, binge eating people look like this, and that you have to be this to even have an eating disorder, which is not even true. And even though they may look like normal weight, like they can still be struggling just as much as someone else and that's where it always gets to the part where oh I don't feel sick enough to go to treatment because she's worse off and I have to lose more weight so pretty much freaking judging someone on the way they look to say that they have an eating disorder is not good because you know what saying like a skinny person has an eating disorder as to where um, an overweight person doesn't or it's just like saying yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Myth two. Eds are caused by the media with the pictures of the Photoshop models and the constant wanting to be thin. No, it's like, it's more so that it doesn't promote health or it doesn't contribute to body positive movements. And the media is just pretty much annoying. So, eds are really a devastating illness, making themselves and suffer as well as their loved ones, their family, and friends. Eds also, eating disorders, I'm sorry, like eds when I say that, just remember it's eating disorders. Eds have a biological and genetic and psychological underpinning. Although rare, only a small amount of percentage will develop an eating disorder due to like media or skinny magazines or something. Although rare, it could be possible. Myth 
Eds are a lifestyle choice and someone can just choose at any moment to not have an eating disorder and just get rid of it like that. <laughs> no. Um, that's completely irrational. Having an eating disorder is a catastrophically severe disease disorder. It's highly complex. It's a highly complex illness with not so much information about it. I mean, we're still doing studies and developing some of them because it shows that there can be genetic predispositions. Also, um, brain chemistry, like certain chemicals or certain part of the brains will actually make you susceptible to engaging in eating disorder behaviors or getting one. And also maybe it's just the pressure from work, school, your parents, and too much pressure can like drive you to want to get like control of something. And as well, I was, it would completely destroy and devastate your family. It's not just you with this eating disorder. Once you get it, you destroy all your relationships, your family, your friends, like you isolate. And it's not just your illness, it's now your family's illness because they have to help you and help deal with you to get into treatment and recovery. Myth four. Anorexia is the only life-threatening illness. <sighs> so this is time to bring all the other eating disorders into the spectrum because it's more than just anorexia, nervosa, bulimia, nervosa, and binge eating disorder. But yes, anorexia does have the highest um, mortality rate of any um, eating disorder categorized, but it's not the only one in existence. Um, of course, bulimia, nervosa, is characterized by binging and purging. And purging can be um, laxative abuse, diuretic abuse, um, over-exercising, and of course, forcing yourself to get sick or throw up. <sighs> and binge eating disorder. Um, episodes of consuming a large amount of food in one sitting, um, usually it'd be more than average, like amount of food that can probably feed like four to five people, and you just eat it in one sitting. And you usually feel like out of control, like even though you want to stop, you can't and it just keeps going and it's repetitive. And so then, here's one of the new ones, if I'm not sure if you guys have heard of it, but it's orthorexia nervosa. And it's a fixation on righteous eating, because that's what it really like translates to, the orthorexia translates to righteous eating. So... Um, dedicated to only healthy raw foods and it turns into like an isolating obsession like they only want the fresh fruit the no chemicals no preservatives and they get obsessed if like if it's like anything else and so even though this particular eating disorder is not um, concerned with being thin just being healthy and we now reached the miscellaneous eating disorder bonuses. All right, so I probably heard of this one, which is Ednos, which is eating disorder not otherwise specified, which is sort of like a catch-all for those who um, present with several symptoms from each of the behaviors or categories or don't quite make qualifications for one. And then there's nighttime eating syndrome. This resembles, sort of resembles binge eating disorder, but not quite because not all the time do they overeat or binge and it's just mainly that they eat at night and that's where in the most time they consume the most of their caloric intake. And like I was saying, all the eating disorders are like predisposed, predisposed and genetically and psychologically affected and nighttime eating syndrome is actually due to a delay in your circadian pattern and of food intake. So, again, just going over like, it's not maybe something that's learned or happened. It's actually could be like brain chemicals or something 
interfering and that's why it's not so easy to always like recover from an eating disorder then we have atypical anorexia which is basically you present with all the signs of anorexia but you don't meet weight qualifications then the one eating disorder that doesn't deal with food pica pica is characterized by um craving non-food items 10 to 32 percent of children of it incur occurs in children actually and developmentally disabled children as well um, it can affect pregnant women in their first trimester and somehow triggered like it's probably triggered by lacking a lack of nutrients nutrients during the pregnancy or just in a person or sometimes pica can just oh pica can inflict like serious injuries into your gastrointestinal system and so here's a little bit of like the non-food items that have been recorded of people ingesting it's been chalk um dirt and dirt and pebbles burnt matches, cigarette butts, detergent, um, insects and bugs and leaves, light bulbs, paper, coal, and etc. So basically everything you have is a little to anything that has little to no nutrients is what they're consuming. So this is the end of part one of Need a Week in Disorder video. Focus on Authenticate You. I will see you in the next video. Thanks.